Good morning students. Welcome to Botany Sessions. And in this videos we are going to discuss another 12th chapter <coughs> Environmental Issues. The subtopic is Alien Invasive Species. And what we are going to discuss now then what is called the invasive species? What do you mean by alien species? How they are introduced in our country? Then what are the effects it is caused by this invasive species? And what are the problems we are going to face for the invasions of this species? These are the topic we are going to discuss now. Then what is called the invasive species or alien? Alien species nothing but non-native species. Non-native species, it is a native of some other countries. If these species are invader into in our country or into the ecosystem of, of our country, definitely it disturbs. It disrupts ecosystem process. Ecosystem process and also threat to our biodiversity and automatically our native species are gets eliminated native herb native herbaceous species herbaceous species soft plant herbaceous species are gets eliminated thus reduce the ecosystem services Reduce ecosystem service services. What are the ecosystem services? Generally, there are four types of ecosystem services. One is provisions service, cultural service, supporting service. Then regulating service. For the invasions or invader of this certain non-native species to our country, definitely it will disturb the ecosystem process. What is called ecosystem? Ecosystem is a sum total of the interactions between the biotic and abiotic factors. These are called ecosystem. The ecosystem process also gets affected due to the invasions of this alien species are also called foreign or some other country species. It is also threatening to the biodiversity and uh, automatically the elimination of our native herbaceous species also gets eliminated that reduce the ecosystem services also. Then what are the ecosystem service? Provision service. For example of provision service providing food, shelter, everything we are depends upon this ecosystem. Cultural, spirituals, or religious values. These are the example for cultural services. Certain plant species are used as a sacred groups or sacred trees for religious purpose. And next, supporting to provide enough oxygen for breathing, uh, supporting of uh, photosynthesis and uh, mineral nutrient cycles. These are the supporting services and regulating service in regulate the climatic conditions. So. Due to this invader of these species, all these environmental services are also gets affected. So now what we are going to do, if you are eliminating this species, how can we eliminated or eradication of this species? By using certain chemical substance. A lot of chemical substances are used to eradication of these species. During these eradications of invasive species, what will happen to release the greenhouse gases? Greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrous oxides, nitrogen dioxide or trioxide, then CH4 methane. So these are the greenhouse gases. If you are using a lot of chemical substances to kill to eradication of these alien species, that increase the greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrous oxides, either maybe 
dioxides or trioxides on the methane as a result increase the carbon dioxide levels it may cause global warming that is a major problem if you if you are using this chemical substance and also this slowly this chemical substances are slowly alter our ecosystem alter ecosystem and also micro climate condition due to this greenhouse gases alter the ecosystem services and also micro climate condition automatically to change the nature of the soil community our nature of the soil community also grows closely i mean uh, gets changes due to this activities or greenhouse gases and it make unsuitable for the growing of our native species unsuitable for the growing of our native species so automatically our native species are gets eliminated due to the this chemical substance what are the purpose we are using this chemical substance to eradication of these invaded species or invasive species so these are the problem as a result there is a local environmental degradation certain important our local species also get lost so these are the problems we are going to face if we are introducing this certain native i mean alien species to our countries so according to <coughs> world conservation union wcn world conservation union have been reported invasive species these are the second most significant species to the threatening of our biodiversity second the most significant to threat our biodiversity to threat to the biodiversity biodiversity is nothing but living organisms rich in both plants and animal community if the native i mean foreign species are also called invasive species or alien species are introduced in our country these are the most second significance to threatening to our biodiversity i mean sense to cause a loss of biodiversity after the habitat destructions after habitat destructions are also called loss i mean what is called habitat it is a place where the organism can live these are called habitat so for the destruction of habitat of wild animals for our own beneficial activities we have to destruct the place or destruction of uh, wild animal habitat of wild animals these are the first foremost significance to threaten to the biodiversity indian question habitat destruction these are the first significant to cause threatening to the biodiversity but what the second cause to threaten the biodiversity uh, invasive species the second most important for cause of threatening to the biodiversity invasive species so it is have been reported wcn world conservation unions now <coughs> what is called invasive species what is invasive species how they are entered in our countries the invasive species it is nothing but non native species non native species it is introduced in our country to the ecosystem that spread naturally without any agent they spread naturally interfere with the existence of our local species interfere with with 
our local species to cause serious impacted to cause serious impact to the threatening of biodiversity as a self a great economic loss also so that is the definition of invasive species once again i would remember invasive species nothing but native of some other countries so these are called non native species that spread naturally to our country with interfere with our local species existence of our local species that possess i means that cause loss of biodiversity great economic losses also caused by this invasive species these are the definition of invasive species how these invasive species are introduced to our country introductions how it is introduced in our country so a number of invasive species are introduced this an accidental introduced in our country through port through port via air and sea it is a first way introduced in our country this invasive species or alien species these alien species are first it's an accidental introductions to our country through port thurai mugangal valiyaga either air or also sea introduced in our country it is a first way then what the second way of introduce in our country some of the research organizations research organization import certain germ plasm of wild varieties germ plasm of wild varieties through which it also can introduce it's a second way introduced in our country uh, research organizations organization import certain germ plasm of wild variety you know what is called germ plasm it is nothing but collections of varieties a collection of seed pollen grain some other genetic resources from different parts of the world to introduce our country because to improve our native crops for the improve our native crops we have to collect the species or seeds or pollen grains uh, tissues from various parts of the world even from the uh, nearby countries also nearby regions or from throughout the world to collect uh, for research purpose these are the wild varieties through which certain alien species also introduce in our countries these are the second then third certain alien species of edible part edible fruit which are which are naturally spread by birds certain edible fruits alien species that is used as uh, edible fruits are introduced in our country it is naturally spread by the birds these are the three ways introduce i mean uh, this foreign species are introduced in our country now we are going to discuss what are the effect this invasive species are actually it is one of the fast growing species they are aggressively uh, occupied the habitat of most of the places in our country and they are well adapted according to our local environmental conditions if they are invader in our country they are well suited or adapted with our local environmental condition it is also affect affect soil community soil community and also soil fauna you know what is called fauna soil organism soil animals for example earthworm earthworm also gets affected because certain aggressive invaders to cause to alterations of nature of the soil also automatically the soil community also gets altered as a result the soil fauna in means soil animals also gets affected so it is one of the negative impact on the decompositions this invasive species has negative impact on decompositions see decomposition 
it is one of, one of the important step in the mineral cycle or nutrient cycles. What is called decomposition? Due to the activity of saprophytic microbes such as bacteria and fungi, they act on the dead bodies of plants and animal community, gets decay, decomposed of organic and inorganic substance, released into the soils. Now these minerals are released into the soil, it's absorbed by the plants, plant perform photosynthesis, they respond for the storage of food material. Plants are the producers, it supply the food to the herbivores. I mean uh, secondary consumer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, these are the ecosystems. If decomposers are gets arrested or affected, they automatically affect the mineral cycles also gets affected. These invasive species or alien species are has a negative impact on the decomposition, how they produce, they cause stress to the neighboring plant. So it has a negative impact. So some of the uh, invasive species that cause environmental issues, we are going to discuss now one by one. For example, environmental issues or invasive species. First one is Hycania. Crassips. It is one of the invasive species introduced in our country. Icarnia crapsis. It is commonly called as water hyacinth. Water hyacinth. What we call in Tamil, Agaya Tamari. So, what's the binam name? Icarnia crassips, commonly called as water hyacinth. So, it is an invasive species or alien species native to South America. Native to South America. These species are introduced in our country as an aquatic ornamental plant. It is an aquatic ornamental plant. So one of the purposes are introduced in our ecosystem or water bodies as an aquatic ornamental plant, but it is a fast growing species within hours. Within a short period, it is one of the fast growing species. They occupy the wild, I mean it causes a great loss of biodiversity in worldwide because of this widespread within a short period. They loss biodiversity worldwide throughout the years also because of this aggressive invader in our countries. It also affect, affect the phytoplanktons. Phytoplankton. These invasive species to affect the production of I mean of phytoplankton. Then what do you mean by phytoplankton? It is a microscopic algae. They are freely floating in the water bodies. For example, Chlamydomonas. Monas, then certain aquatic uh, algae, for example, Spirogaira, Chlorella, these are called phytoplankton. Word phyto means plant. They are free floating microscopic algae, freely floating on the water surface. These are the primary producers of the ecosystems. Phytoplankton is eaten by zooplankton. Zooplankton is eaten by small fish, small fish eaten by large fish, large fish eaten by decomposers. So these are the various tropic level of ecosystem. I mean by the invading or introductions of these species to the water bodies, it also affects the phytoplankton. If the phytoplankton are gets affected automatically to change the structure of the ecosystem also gets affected. It is a major problem. Then another problem actually, it reduces the Content, I mean oxygen content of the water bodies. Reduce oxygen content of the water bodies. As a result, which cause 
eutrophication it may cause eutrophication what do you mean by eutrophications see due to the vigorous spreading or fast growing over the surface of the water bodies it prevent the entry of oxygen into the water bodies as well it is a toxic to the aquatic organism by this process called eutrophication simple the word eutrophication is nothing but it's happened during rainy season during rainy season due to the entry of sewage into the water bodies they increase the nutrient content of the water bodies as a cell there is a profuse growth of these icarnia species profuse in the sense excessive growth of these icarnia crops is cover the over surface of the water bodies look like a green carpet if they cover the entire water surface it prevent the entry of oxygen into the water bodies so they are toxic to the aquatic organism by this process called eutrophication so this species reduce the oxygen content of water bodies which leads to the eutrophications and it is also to create uh, breeding places of certain uh, disease causing organism so it is uh, interfere with our health problem also this invasive species that cause uh, health problems how they cause health problem especially for the breeding that provide a habitat it provide provide habitat for the certain disease causing mosquito for example especially female anopheles mosquito female anopheles mosquito and also snail the female anopheles mosquito they are responsible to cause malaria so where they breed, it gets breeding especially in the roots it has a dense root system if you take the diagram for example this aquatic plant stolen underground stem That's a long root. They are free floating roots. It is a thin fibrous root system. Fibrous root system. It is a stolon, stem stolon. It covered with root as fine thin thread root as. The root tip is covered with the root pocket because it's aquatic plant. In terrestrial plant, root tip is covered with the root pocket. But whereas in hydrophytic plant, instead of that root cap, root pocket is present. It has a dense root system. The leaves also semi submerged root. Semi submerged. I mean. partially under the water bodies partially above the water these are called semi submerged so because of its dense root system and its dense leaf it provides this place for the breeding of mosquito and also snail so especially particularly for the disease causing mosquito for example female anopheles mosquito gets breed it may cause malaria especially snail also so that is why it is cause 
it is affect our human health also because of its uh, provide a habitat for the disease causing organism and also it prevent entry of sunlight entry of sunlight to the water bodies it prevent the deep entry of sunlight to the water bodies if the sunlight are gets prevented automatically photosynthesis are affected by the producers producer they may not be see this food material next sequence secondary consumer consumers level also gets affected and also it prevent water base prevent water base the water base also gets affected because of its a dense growth they are uh, growing in the water base the water actually flow from where to where water bodies to the lake from the lake to the neighboring land for agriculture purpose for agricultural purpose fisheries fishery purpose and also hydro power hydro power so because of this hampering in the sense to stop or preventing of water bed agriculture fisheries hydro power also gets affected so these are the environmental issues caused by these species icarnia crassips when they are introduced in our aqua bodies as a aquatic ornamental plant these are the problems the second invasive species for example prosopis juliflora what being a we call tamil kattu karuvelam that's its by now name is prosopis juliflora the prosopis juliflora it is an invasive species but it actually is a native to it's a native to mexico on south america mexico and south america it was first introduced first introduced to gujarat for the purpose of against our counter against to desertification desertifications what do you mean desertifications it is nothing but the fertile land fertile land slowly converted into desert due to water scarcity destruction of forests felling of trees now these fertile lands are slowly converted into desert by this process called desertification to prevent the desertification these prosopis juliflora introduced to the gujarat especially it's a native from where to where mexico or south america to the gujarat then next is second it's from the gujarat it is introduced to andhra pradesh then finally to in our state tamil nadu reduced to tamil nadu it is one of the major sources of firewood firewood this species prosophis juliflora it is one of the major sources of uh, firewood to in our state so what are the effect it is one of the aggressive invader to the habitat because of this aggressive colonizer they are occupied the maximum habitat of the organisms and also to prevent the cover of certain important local medicinal plant also gets affected because of this invader because of this widespread aggressive colonizing our local medicinal plants also they prevent from spreading it also gets lost so what are the uses of this plant actually <coughs> which is used to arrest wind erosions as a salt to stabilizing the sand dunes 
stabilizes sand dunes in the coastal as well as desert areas. So it is a useless. It, it, actually, it is a huge trees. The, due to the presence of these huge, tre huge trees, it prevents the blowing of or arrest the wind erosion. As the wind erosion is arrested, that uh, sand dunes actually get stabilizing. One are kundrugal. Sand dunes are get stabilizing, especially in the coastal areas as well as desert. The second uses, it also absorbs, absorbs certain hazardous chemicals, hazardous chemical substance from the soils. Then next, third one, it is used as a major sources of, sources of charcoal. Charcoal in our state. So these are the uses of this Prosophis juliflora. The next topic we are going to discuss: considerations of biodiversity. Next, conservation. What is called biodiversity? It's rich in plants and animal community. See, India is a gift nature of biodiversity. It's a rich source of biodiversity. India has a diverse life form. A diverse, in our country, India has a diverse life form. Because of its topograph, topography, geology and various climatic pattern climatic pattern they, it has a diverse life form India see what is called topography it is a surface of uh, surface features of the earth is called topography earth has a not a uniform surface not a even surface it is uneven surface Due to several physical and biological factors or several environmental factors like, like temperatures, water, it has a diverse life forms, especially India. And due to geology, nature of the soils, various climatic conditions, a rich wealth of biodiversity in India. And now, this rich wealth of biodiversity comes under the category of threatening due to various environmental issues. Because of various environmental issues, for example, carbon dioxide, uh, increase the carbon dioxide level, they may cause global warming, ozone depletions, and destruction of uh, wild animals, habitat, uh, destruct the habitat of wild animals. Because of these environmental issues, now these rich sources of biodiversity comes under the category of threatening. For this purpose, Conservation it is an important tool by which we can protect the many species are getting lost from our own land or also called native land. By the application or by employing of these conservation strategies, conservation management strategy, we can protect the loss of certain our native species. So how can we protect the loss of our native species by employing certain conservation management strategies? Conservation management strategies. If you follow these conservation management strategies, definitely we can protect the certain rare species, endangered species, endemic species, threatened species. What are the strategies? First one is germ plasm conservations. Germ plasm. Second one is in situ conservations. In the in situ, it is also called on site. On site conservation. The third one is ex situ conservations. Ex situ, it is also called 
off-site conservations. Then fourth one is in vitro, in vitro method, in vitro method. So by employing these conservation management strategies, definitely we can protect certain endemic species. Endemic or threatening or rare species. Certain endangered species. Species we can easily protect from their loss or especially loss from their our natural lands. Then what is called endemic species? Endemic species are they are restricted to the particular geographical area. They are existed only in a particular geographical area. These are called the endemic species. By applying these, by using uh, these strategies, we can easily protect these endemic species, such as rare species, threatened species also. Our next, uh, certain movements, I mean voluntary movements are also certain uh, people movements are actively participate to conservation of our local environmental condition. Now we are going to discuss what are the people movements are involved. Next, conservations movement. See, Makkal Yekam. Conservation is important tools that is used to prevent the loss of our native species. How can we conserve? See, the local community people are they are actively involved, especially particularly for the community level participations that is essential or it is a help to preservation and the conservation of our local environment. See, it is a duty of every citizen, they are actively participate for the conservation of our local environment because we are in the environment. If the environment gets affected, automatically it's our, our life also gets affected. So it's a important and necessary to protect our local environment and it is a duty of every individuals. So in Indian history as the witness for certain people movement, people movement also they are actively participated to protect our local environment. Some of the people, people movement, the first one is Chipko movement. Chipko movement. The Chipko movement actually it was first started by Sundarlal Bhagwan. Sundarlal Bhaguguna is the first person to start a Chipko movement. Chipko movement, how they started, especially by the tribal peoples. The tribal women who they are in the Himalayas by protest against their destruction of forest in their area, protest against for the destruction of forest. Against for destruction of forest. In the year 1974, especially tribal women's peoples. But actually, Forest Act, National Forest Act, was started in the year 1972. The Forest National Forest Act Protecting Act. Protect Act was started in the year 1972. With the help of this National Forest Protect Act, this movement was has been transformed into Chipko movement. Chipko movement in the year 1974. This movement actually has been transformed into Chipko movement by Sundarlal Bhakgana in the year 1974 in a small village. Mendel village, Sundarlal Bhagwana, was a Mendel village of Kamori district. Kamori district in Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand. Now it is a part of UP Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand. So how they protest against of felling of trees 
by hugging the trees the people sat together hugging the trees protested against for destruction which were filmed by certain sports goods companies so what are the major features a major features of this chipko moment the first features it is remains non political non political the second one is it is a voluntary moment based on their gandhian thought gandhian thought gandhian sindhanegale ulvaangi tannal var thundu da gandhian sindhanegale ulvaangiya oru tannal var thundu da in the chipko moment so first major features of this chipko moment it is a non political there's no difference about any politicals it is a voluntary movement based on their gandhian thought the third one is it is mainly concerned with ecological imbalance ecological ecological balance in the nature ecological balance in the nature if we are failing to protect our environment then what will happens ecology becomes imbalanced they are upset of the natures so to prevent the upset of nature we have to follow this chipko movement the next the main aim of this chipko movement is given to slogan of slogan of five f five f what are five f the first f for providing food second for providing fodder third fiber the fourth one is fuel the fifth one is fertilizers fertilizers so these are the basic needs are fulfilled by the local community peoples they are self sufficient this movement actually it make the local peoples for self sufficient by all their basic needs these are called five slogan food fodder fibers fuel everything are depends upon this forest so these are the chipko movement the second one is apico movement apico movement apico movement was started by panduranga hedge hedge see how this started what the purpose of started for epico movement so a famous chipko movement also called chipko andolan of uttarakhand in himalayas uttarakhand himalayas inspired the peoples or villages of uttar karnataka inspired the villages of uttar karnataka karnataka so for launch the same movement for launch the same movement of chipko movement was launched to protect their forest especially this chipko movement was started by sundarlal bodhana in uttarakhand now a part of uttar pradesh it is also for the purpose of establish this movement for the protection of the forest the similar movement also was started by panduranga hedge he was in gudigad small village near srishti district in karnataka by panduranga hedge in the year september september 1983 so chipko movement was started september 1983 by panduranga hedge near srishti district small srishti district in karnataka district and this chipko movement actually inspired the peoples from the from the uttarakhand to the uttar karnataka protect their trees also and what the purpose what the main features of this chipko movement was started by protest against of felling of trees felling of trees destruction of forest
is a stretch now forest and against forest policy. So to protect these felling of trees and destruction of forest, we established Apica movement. Both Chipko movement and Apica movement are launched or established against the protest of forest. Thank you students. The next videos we are going to discuss continuous of this uh, classifications of biodiversity. Thank you.